Engines with gasoline direct injection create the air-fuel mixture right in the combustion chamber. This results in higher compression, thus improving efficiency. Torque and driving dynamics are increased, while emissions levels are reduced. In combination with turbocharging and downsizing, gasoline direct injection offers the potential of lowering fuel consumption and CO2 output by around 15%. Additional optimizations can be made with functional features such as scavenging and CVO. Mounted on the fuel rail are high pressure injectors that meter the fuel and spray it under high pressure right into the combustion chamber. Bosch injectors with innovative laser-drilled spray holes provide maximal flexibility in spray configuration while minimizing wall wetting in the combustion chamber. To achieve the best possible combustion, during gasoline direct injection, the air-fuel mixture is created right inside the combustion chamber. All right, guys, so today we're talking about direct injection and how to prevent the dreaded carbon buildup. Now, this is a topic that's been going on for quite a while. Direct, inj direct injection, if you don't know, is a fuel injection that sprays fuel right into the cylinders, not mounted to the intake manifold like the, the conventional fuel injection is. This sprays directly in. By doing that, you get better efficiency, you have more capabilities of tuning, efficiency, fuel economy, and so forth. Um, now, a lot of people say, well, what's the actual cause of the carbon buildup due to direct injection? Well, I start off first saying this is not a BMW only thing, this is not a Toyota thing, this is not a Chevy thing. Every car with, direction, with the direct injection suffers from this problem. And there's a lot of theories of what causes it. Now, most cars run a PCV system. PCV system, kind of like this, there's many different kinds. Um, this is typical on a lot of the German cars. This is a PCV or oil separator, as some call it. And this is designed to pull vapors from the crankcase and reburn them or even deposit them back into the oil pan. Um, a failing PCV will definitely heighten your uh, deposits a lot quicker. And, but the issue they're finding is even when the PCV is good, you still have the buildup. Now, We'll go a, a different direction here. What's the preventative maintenance on that? Well, a lot of people say put a catch can on it. A catch can like this one, I'll put a picture up here maybe, um, where it has, it's like a canister, it has two hoses going in and out. One goes to vacuum, one goes to the crankcase, and that pulls vacuum across uh, this canister and all the condensation and all the oil vapors fall in here then you have to dump this every so often. Well, here's the issue with the catch can. Sometimes they're difficult to hook up, depends on what kind of car it's on. You might have trouble finding a vacuum port big enough or one sufficient enough to get the correct amount of vacuum uh, pulled on the engine at the right time. Uh, we've had that problem using those catch cans before on BMWs, but some cars they work very well on, certain ones they don't. The worst part is you have to dump it constantly. And even on a six cylinder engine, a catch can that size, you have to dump it every couple of weeks. If you live in an area where it rains a lot, there's a lot of humidity, you're gonna have a lot more vapor. If it gets cold and warm, it's gonna fill up very quickly. Not to mention if you run that on a V8 or even a V10 like the M5 here, you're gonna have a lot more vapor and it's gonna fill up a lot. And if you don't dump it, what's gonna happen, it's gonna cause the engine to misfire. Once that starts filling up, it backs up starts going into the intake system, and it's gonna cause a lot of issues. Now, preventative wise, you can use sea foam. A lot of people, there's different spray cleaners you can spray into your intake. You gotta watch that though, because all cars are not okay with that. Um, and sea foam, if you ever use sea foam, unless you spray it directly on a carbon deposit and scrub it, usually it won't come off just by a little bit of sea foam getting on it. Uh, same with carb cleaner too. And so a lot of guys do that as preventative. The catch can possibly can prevent it. In theory, the catch can would be the best preventative. Uh, and guys do use these on a lot of the turbo cars. That's real common. Uh, just be cautious of it. And a lot of those catch cans are cheaply made. 
So they don't last a long time. They start leaking, they cause vacuum leaks and all that kind of stuff. So another solution to the direct injection buildup is walnut blasting. This is where they remove the intake manifold. Uh, they actually essentially bead blast walnut shells or other media, the intake valves and blast all that built up oil residue and carbon out of there. Now that's not cheap on some cars. That's very difficult to do. It depends on how hard the intake manifold is to get off. The next thing is you got to find a shop that's willing to do that and a shop that not only is willing to do it, but a shop that knows how to do it. If you don't know how to do that correctly, things go very wrong. You don't want those walnut shells down in your engine. You got to make sure the shop knows very well what they're doing and all that kind of stuff. Um, so you have that. Now, a lot of times people replace, they'll place the catch can on their cars because you have a bad PCV, you don't want to replace it. And a lot of the BMW guys that watch the channel have one of these bad boys, which is a plastic valve cover. Um, as far as replacing this stuff, one of these with a catch can, it's not really feasible anymore. Back when I made the videos on how to do that, those items were a lot more expensive, a lot harder to get to, and now they're fairly cheap. Also, a crack in that plastic valve cover can cause a PCV problem. It can cause buildup on a direct injected engine a lot worse. On a non-direct injected engine, what does that cause? It causes the oil to get in your intake manifold. That could ruin things like a disavow, valve, it could get all over your throttle body, any kind of manifold uh, intake sensor, temperature sensor, it gets all over that. There's various things in there you don't want oil on. The problem is oil breaks down plastics and rubber gaskets and O-rings over time. Um, so if you have an issue, even if your car is not direct injected, it's best, best to get it fixed ASAP or that could cause some other problems long term. And in fact, this has been such a, a problem over a lot of manufacturers that companies like Toyota have actually started putting another set of injectors as an update like in the actual intake manifold back further. So in theory, it would spray a small amount of fuel in every so often and clear out the valves. Um, but there again, you're back to the situation to where can you spray enough fuel? It almost has to be at a high pressure too to actually break down that stuff. I guess if you did it all the time, you never would have enough buildup on the valves to cause a problem in theory. Uh, but I'm not sure how far they went with that. I know that was an update for a long time on a lot of the Lexus stuff. I don't know if that carried over into using that on the new cars or not. So I guess really a lot of you are going to ask, should you even worry about buying a direct injected car? Well, before, before long, you're not going to have a choice. Everything's basically direct injected now. Um, you're going to find out some cars are worse about it than others. Depends on the setup, how things are set up. Um, just be aware if you're going to buy a direct injected car with some miles on it, even 50,000 miles, be aware that you might have spent some money on that car to get those problems alleviated. And a lot of you guys are saying, I have a direct injected car right now. How do I know if I had this problem? Usually if it gets very bad at all, you'll start having rough cold starts, a rough idle, poor fuel economy. Those are the symptoms of the buildup, the direct injection buildup, you might say. There's something else I wanna to add to this too. It's not only if you buy a used direct injected car that the buildup is a problem. The other issue is direct injection is famous for the fuel injectors having issues. And the fuel injectors on a direct injected car are not cheap at all. And that could easily be the most expensive thing on the whole entire car other than the transmission or the actual engine itself. So you have to watch out for that. Uh, be prepared for that. A lot of stuff nowadays requires you code in the injectors or you actually have to do some form of programming uh, for it to set new ejectors. It's not a plug and play situation anymore. Those are all things you have to keep in mind. If you're aware of it and you're okay with spending money on the car, if you have to do those things, that's fine. But it's my job to be here and make you aware of it, tell you about these problems so I don't get you by surprise and empty out your checking account. That's gonna be it. Thanks for watching guys. Have a good day. We'll see you later.